Access to land is uh, a major barrier in the, the transition, uh, as is already mentioned today as well several times. And in Flanders, uh, as in many other countries, prices for agricultural land are going up fast. Um, for example, also because there is no regulation, uh, prices in Flanders are about 10 times as high as in France, where the market is regulated by the SAFER system. And also landowners have little interest in leasing land, so basically if you want to start as a farmer and you don't come from a uh, background uh, in farming, it's very difficult to find land. So, um, And we did a policy brief on access to land, um, which we also distributed at the coach events. Uh, I'm not going to go into it, but one of the recommendations uh, was using public land as a tool for transition. Um, so public land, that can be any land like from local governments or regional governments, or it can be from churches or welfare institutions like the OCMV, uh, the public welfare institution. Um, it can um, be used as a tool for transition in many ways, in one way that it can uh, help get access to land for farmers, but it can also help in like uh, getting the transition going in um, providing food for people in precarity in uh, local food systems. So it's a very interesting tool. But there's a big lack of data on, ex on land, uh, on public land in general. And um, one of the founding members of uh, the Hongarige Stad did, did his PhD on that, uh, which is recommended literature if you're interested in the topic. Uh, and he started collecting data for Flanders. Um, but uh, the whole debate on selling public land came to public attention after the case Huts. Uh, and the case Huts is a court case which uh, gained a lot of publicity in Flanders, which was after the OCMV, so Public Welfare of Ghent, sold uh, 450 hectares, uh, which is more than 1,000 acres um, of public land. Um, to a company of Fernand Hutz, who is a big CEO of a big company in Antwerp. And two farmers, Annelies and Peter, who you see on the picture, took this to court because actually, basically, they also wanted to buy land, but they couldn't um, because it was all sold in one go. Um, and this led to a whole campaign uh, by the Hongerige Stad, uh, the Hungry City, named after the book by Caroline Steele, uh, which was founded in 2019. Uh, while this court case was going, and they wrote a letter to the city council of Ghent demanding like, to stop selling the public land and to use it as a tool for transition. And it got a lot of support in Ghent, like hundreds of people signed it, over 70 organizations signed it. So <clears throat> after that, the city council announced that they would stop selling public land for two years, so they had a moratorium of two years, and meanwhile they would work on a policy on agriculture land, which um, was good. Meanwhile, we had a campfire of coach, uh, which was used for strategizing and campaigning. Um, then we also had a multi-actor dialogue um, on the use of public land, where we invited um, people from local governments in Brussels and Leuven, where they already used public land. Um, and so that was very interesting. We also had the Food Policy Council of Antwerp and many different players, so that was good. Then finally, last year we had a victory because the farmers won the court case and also the city council announced that they would prolong the moratorium so they would continue not to sell public land until the elections next year. And this week the policy of agriculture was voted on Tuesday and they have a very progressive, uh, nice policy on land in Ghent now which also has a part on public land, so that was good. And when we will keep um, campaigning and doing policy work. And also one thing coming up is uh, pictures with um, an exhibition next year um, on, with pictures on, of public land in Flanders, which was also started by the COACH project. Thank you.